Hello, boys and girls. Today, I'm going to show you kind of a quick way that you can share documents maybe a little more effectively, uh, either with your classmates or with other staff members. First thing I do want to touch on real quick, though, is the difference between sharing documents and making copies of documents. When we share documents, there's a couple of things that happen. The first main thing is that one person owns the document, which means that one person has complete ownership of it. Of course, you can transfer ownership rights as well, but essentially you're working with one live document amongst a bunch of different people where if I change edits on mine, that it changes the edits on everybody else. So every document is the same when we actually share. It goes into your shared folder, and from there, again, you can move it or reorganize it, but the one big thing is that whoever created the document, whoever has the primary ownership of it, if they ever leave or if they choose to delete it, then everybody loses access to it, which can be a problem. We've ran into this a couple times this school year. With copies, when you're making copies or sending copies out in Google Apps, what it does is you are taking a snapshot of the current document of where it's at right then and there. So what that means is that when you share a document or when you make a copy and give somebody a copy of your document, your edits do not transfer over to the other documents. So edits that are made do not transfer over. So what that means is that if you copy a document or you offer a copy to somebody else, you change something on yours, it will not change something on theirs. A lot of times teachers do prefer to use copies because we run into situations at times where teachers will share documents with students and maybe by accident they'll give them editing rights and the next thing you know that students have changed the document, manipulated the document to the point where now it's pretty much got to be redone. Copies, if you send a copy, make sure that your document stays unchanged. The other nice thing that copies does is it gives the other person a permanent document as well. So when you give them a copy, it automatically goes into their Google Drive and it stays in there. If you delete it, it does not delete off of theirs. Some benefits to this would be if we wanted to share maybe notes, maybe a worksheet, could be a, it could be even a Google slide presentation, maybe it's a sheet template that you want them to use for a graphing program. There's a lot of reasons why we might create a document and instead of just sharing it, we might actually want to give the kids working copies that they can work with. Again, it preserves the integrity of our original document, but it also ensures that they have something in their drive that is permanent that they can work with that will not interfere with what you have done with your document. All right, let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to start off by going into my drive at drive.google.com. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new document for us to work with. So I'm just going to go to a Google Doc. And this process would work the same with sheets or slides. Either way is the same. So I'm going to give it a name. This is Levno's Chapter 1 Test. And I'm going to go ahead and put some information down here in the bottom. That's going to be my notes. Now, I want to share this, or I shouldn't use share, I want to give the students a copy of this document so that I can share it easily without interrupting what I'm doing right here. This is how easy it is. If you look up here, you can see that it says edit. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this URL, and I'm going to open up a new tab and then paste it. But instead of edit, at the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that with the word copy. And watch what happens when I hit enter. What it's going to do, it's going to ask me, would you like to make a copy of Levno's Chapter 1 test? And for this situation, I'm going to say make a copy. And what you're going to see is it's going to make a copy of Levno's Chapter 1 test. And there's the information right there. And if I go back to my drive, you can see it puts it in right there. Now, here's what I was talking about the editing thing before. Now, this is the original one. So I'm going to go ahead and add another word to my document here. So again, I'm editing this, and you can see in the situation of a copy, that does not transfer over. Now, if I would have shared it with him, we would see those edits happen, but in this case, I didn't. We now have two documents going at once. Again, probably not the greatest idea if you're going to do collaboration with the department so that we're multiple people are working on a live document, but again, a great way 
to keep the integrity of your document where you don't want students editing it and you want to ensure that they have a copy on their computer that's going to be uninterrupted and usable for a long time. The copy feature works really, really slick. All right, just to show you guys again, I'm going to go and create a slide presentation. And I'm going to name this one. This will be Selner's Review. And with slides, you can see at the end here, I don't get the nice edit right at the end. You can see I've got this extension here at the end. Now, watch this. If I make another slide, you can see if I click between the two, the extension changes. So that extension on the end after edit is just saying what slide I'm currently on. So here's how I do it with slides. I can pick any slide I want. It doesn't really matter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of that at the end, delete it, and just write copy again. And now, again, check this out. So I highlight it all, copy it. I'm going to paste it, hit Enter. And you can see I get the exact same thing. Would you like to make a copy? I would. And you can see, boom, there's my copy complete with two slides of Selner's review. All right, to save a little time, I opened up a sheet that's already for you. We'll name this one Nelson's Awesome Test Whatever. And I can type in everything in here. But again, kind of like slides, you can see that since there are sheets that are available to add and edit in Google Sheets. I get this GID0 at the end. Again, just like last time, I'm going to delete all that and just write copy at the end, highlight it all. You can see when I paste it, it's going to ask me again, would you like to make a copy of it? I will. And there it is, complete and ready to go. So we've made these internet links for copy. And again, I would like to point out throughout this whole thing that we have not played with any of the sharing settings whatsoever. We've not gone in and said you have to be at this spot to see it, or you have to be in dc.k12, or you even have to be signed in. All we've done is just change that edit to copy, and we've been able to share these documents pretty much right away without worrying about all the permissions and stuff like that. Did I set it right or whatever? So how do we use these links? So again, on this one right here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it to a copy. I'm ready to share this out with my class. And you could use a number of different things. You could use your website. You could use uh, camp or Campus. You could use Moodle. You could use Google Classroom. All these are good options. In this case, I'm going to go to Google Classroom. So once we get into Google Classroom here, what I'm going to do is I am going to create an announcement. And I'm just going to say, here is the review for the test. Now. In my testing that I have done, when I if I click on the link button here and put the internet link down there, I have found that this does not work, oddly enough. I'm not too sure why. You have to put the link up here. And you can see that if I post it up here, then I'll even give you the student perspective here. Here's a test student that we have that is in my class. I'll refresh the page to see the post I just made. And there it is. And you can see that when I click on it, there I get the copy option right there. So it's going to go into my drive normally. And what I have found, just so you guys are aware, that for some reason, if I put this in the link, I'll even try to do it twice here. If I put this in the link, <coughs> the internet link is the same. But for whatever reason, if kids click on the other link, if they click down here, you can see that they do not get that copy option. It forces them into a view only. So if you're going to use this, especially with Google Classroom, put your information right there, paste it right underneath there. Do not post it as a link itself. So just to show you one more time, I'm going to click here. If I was making a new post, again, I am not going to use the link option up here. I'm going to simply type my text here of whatever I want, and then I'm going to paste it right in there and save it. And if I do that way, I will be able to make copies to everybody else where they can edit mine. So hopefully you can see the benefits to this. Again, if you want to maintain the integrity of your original document, if you're worried about kids messing with it or editing it, this is a fantastic option for you to use. It's a lot easier than going through the sharing settings and making sure you're doing everything okay. Plus it gives the kids a permanent copy 
of something that they can work with and edit to their heart's content and it will never interfere with yours. You can delete yours, move yours, do anything you want and will not impact their ability to access their document whatsoever. So hopefully you enjoyed that, found it useful and until next time, see you later.